Hey, James, you want a folding phone? Yeah, I'll just take out a second mortgage. Oh, I had a whole nother joke planned for that, but I guess we're going with that. Yep, folding phones are officially a thing. Samsung unveiled the Galaxy Fold last week, but this weekend at Mobile World Congress, Huawei showed off their own design, which has what I think is an objectively better design. Where Samsung's model has a 4.6 inch exterior screen that opens up to reveal a 7.2 inch screen with a notch, the Huawei Mate X has a single eight inch screen when unfolded. When it's folded, that same display is divided into a 6.6 .6 inch screen on the front and 6.38 inch screen on the back because the camera assembly takes up some space on the rear. Having the display fold on the outside saves Huawei from having to include a gap like the Galaxy Fold does. It also means the device is much more usable in folded mode than Samsung's offering. Oppo also showed off a folding phone prototype that uses essentially the same design, and I don't blame them. Although it doesn't really matter which one I like more because it doesn't look like the Mate X will be coming to North America anytime soon, which is fine because as James alluded to, it's expensive. It's $2,600. US dollars. Yeah, I can't even conceive of that with my Canadian brain. And I don't want Huawei spying on me anyway. Yeah. Yeah, kind of crazy how fast things move though. Like I thought the Fold, when, when we saw the Galaxy Fold, I thought that was the future. I was like, whoa, folding folds are here. And now it's like, the Fold? Pfft, that's old tech. Old news, boo! But Huawei wasn't the only company innovating at MWC, no. Microsoft showed off the HoloLens 2, which improves upon the original mixed reality headset in basically every way. It's got a more comfortable fit and higher resolution displays, but most importantly, the field of view has been more than doubled. The new model offers the same 47 pixels per degree of human vision, but with a diagonal field of view around 53 degrees per eye. Still not amazing. More degrees though. More, more degrees, more better. It has vastly improved hand tracking as well, so instead of pinching your fingers, you can reach out and manipulate holograms directly. You can still pinch. Yes. You can, you like, if you like the pinching, you can still pinch. You wanna, you wanna grab it, spin it. Yeah, Grr. And it also has eye tracking and voice detection, which can be used for things like navigating browser windows and dictating text while your hands are otherwise occupied. Doing what, James? You sicko. The HoloLens 2 is being targeted at businesses first and foremost, and that's reflected in its price of $3,500, which is actually less than the first gen HoloLens price of 5,000. But more than a folding phone. Why not both? Why not both? Yeah. And LG had their own peculiar answer to the folding phone trend, adding a second screen. The LG V50 ThinQ 5G, why? We'll be able to attach to the dual screen case and turn your phone into an Android Nintendo DS, essentially. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't understand this. <laughs> the second display can be used as a keyboard, gamepad, or simply used to run two full screen apps at once. Gotta say, I almost like this better than the idea of a folding phone. High five, LG. Oh, whoops. I just unlocked LG's other flagship phone, the G8 ThinQ which has a time of flight sensor that enables users to unlock the device with their hand. See what, I, see what I, I went for a high five. Of course, you can also use your face, but having a phone recognize the veins in your hand sounds way cooler and creepy. The sensor can also be used to recognize a number of air motion gestures so you can control your phone while your little fingies are covered in buffalo wing sauce or buffalo cauliflower, James, I'm sorry. I wanna close apps by wax off. <laughs> wax on. Swipe right. Damn, girl! <laughs> Thanks for talking to me. Wow. See you later. Oh, it's also got a vibrating OLED screen that serves as a speaker. Cool stuff, LG, but you're still not Samsung. Getting close, though. Hard. It's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by Brilliant Daily Problems. Hey, you want to be smarter? If you answered no, then you should definitely pay attention, because exercising your brain only takes five minutes a day with Brilliant's Daily Problems. Each problem provides you with the context and framework that you need to tackle it, so you learn concepts by applying them. These thought-provoking challenges will lead you from curiosity to mastery one day at a time. And if you want to continue learning, there are more challenges and a helpful community to guide your adventure. Plus, the first 200 TechLink viewers to sign up get 20% off an annual subscription. So head to brilliant.org slash TechLink and finish your day a little smarter. Um, the quick bits, I guess?
We got leaks about Sony's new phones with ultra-wide 21 by 9 aspect ratios, but now they're out in the open. The Xperia 1, 10, and 10 Plus sport the new cinematic 4K OLED displays, along with triple rear camera setups and other snappy specs. Even if your friend's phones are more popular, at least yours will be taller. Because that's what you want in a phone if you want, you just want to beat your... My friend, my phone's better than your phone is. You know what they say about big phones? They're be they're better. Apparently what Nokia wants in a phone is more cameras. Introducing the new Nokia 9 PureView. Five cameras with Zeiss optics. The Nokia 9 PureView has also been leaked like crazy, and all of those leaks have been pretty accurate. The device has five rear cameras, plus a flash and time of flight sensor, developed in collaboration with Zeiss Optics. And what they do is stitch the resulting images together using software developed by Light, that other company that makes tryptophobia-inducing camera setups. Like taking photos, but disappointed that your subjects aren't nauseous enough? Nokia 9 PureView. Buy today, if you want. Zeiss one, hey. <laughs> HTC didn't have many phones to show off at MWC, but they did have a 5G hotspot. With Damn. You, you're impressed? Hotspot, <laughs> It's got a 5.5 inch touchscreen, so you can use it as a heavy tablet. So that's cool. And it's also got a 7,660 milliamp hour battery, so you can use it as a power bank. So it's like a hotspot and a bunch of other things. And it even has an ethernet port, so you can use 5G with a laptop if you're in a pinch. Although, chances are if you're in an area without Wi-Fi, there's also gonna be no 5G, so. Ah, HTC, what are we gonna do with you? Go to business already. <laughs> yeah. Leave alone. I liked you, I, you know, I, I, I still have some love for you in my heart, but. And speaking of 5G, T-Mobile has announced the rollout of their 5G network will be delayed as it awaits availability of devices that can use the low band 600 megahertz spectrum. Sprint, on the other hand, announced they would roll out 5G service to Atlanta, Chicago, Dallas, and Kansas City in May 2019. As for us up here in Canada, well, we'll just wait until you guys down there have all got 5G first. We don't mind waiting our turn, okay? Have a good one. Well, it's about that time. I'm still talking like this because I wrote the script this way. I reckon there'll be a bit more tech news on Wednesday. So until then, I gotta take off. See you later, James. See you later. Don't forget to send it. I know. Take care. Take care. Drive safe now.